Ever wonder what happens to empty plastic bottles after they're collected from your recycling bin? They come to places like this, a PET recycling facility. This one just happens to be one of the largest and most sophisticated ones in the United States. It uses green technology such as solar panels to help convert 2.5 billion empty plastic bottles each year into useful products. And do you know what else? We all need to recycle as much as we can because there's a huge demand for these plastic bottles. Let's go check out how they're put to good use. So what we do is we get these uh, bales of bottles. They're about between 800 and 1,000 pounds, depending on how much pressure is used to bale them. Okay. And we get them from uh, all over the country. We try and source as many as we can from the southeast and our region. And we take these bottles and we go inside and we break them up and, and we start the process. How many bottles do you recycle a day? We do about 1.5 million bottles a day. That's a lot. It is a lot. And we run seven days a week, uh, 24 hours a day. The plastic bottles that go to landfills, do they ever separate it out and bring them here? They do. Some facilities do do that. Uh, we just wish that more people would recycle and we could end up with more bottles. Okay. Uh, that's one of our biggest issues is not having enough bottles to, to feed our plant. So what we do is we take the bales that we just saw outside and we bring them inside with a forklift. Okay. And the forklift operator puts them on what we call a, a bale breaker. And what this does is it has big teeth in there and it pulls the bale apart where we're dealing with single single bottles rather than a whole clump of bottles. And from this point, we go into a trommel. And in the trommel, we're also breaking up the bales. Uh, so we're ending up with a single stream of bottles. And we get some of the labels knocked off there. And any dirt or rocks or debris that might be in the bale will come out there underneath. What's this thing? That's actually a magnet there, and what it does is it pulls off any uh, steel cans, uh, any metal that might be in the in the bale, oh, okay. and it also pulls off, uh, as you saw outside, some of the bales are wrapped with steel cables, and if, if some of those actually get through, uh, it'll pull those out as well. As you can see the stream here, we get all sorts of bottles, uh, different brands, we get soda bottles, we get water bottles. Okay. Here we go to different holding bins, and then we go into big washing machines. You can see this first one right here filling. Okay. That washing machine is just like the one at your house, except we're washing bottles rather than washing clothes. Yeah. And what this does is it knocks off the label, it knocks off any dirt on the outside of the bottle, and it also knocks off the glue that's holding the label. Okay. And after this, the washer tilts forward, it's on hydraulics, it tilts forward onto a conveyor belt, and we send it down to the end of the building here, and we go through another trommel, like you saw earlier. Okay. And you'll notice that most of the bottles don't have labels on them anymore. We've knocked off the label and knocked off the glue. From the washers that we just saw, we go through the trommel, and then we go through an automated sorting machine. That machine can tell the uh, type of plastic, whether it's PET, like a soda bottle, or whether it's HDPE, like a laundry detergent bottle. Okay. And it uses pressurized air to sort the bottle. It can also uh, tell what color it is, whether it's a green bottle or a clear bottle. Oh. They see we have a, a green stream and a clear stream. We still have uh, some employees doing some manual sorting. This machine doesn't, doesn't get it 100% right all the time. But what we do from here is we, we uh, convey them into the other room there, and in the other room we have our grinders, and we grind it into plate. Um, and we grind it with the cap on, which is made from a different type of material. Okay. That type of material floats. And so what we do is when we grind it, we bring it back over and we put it in a bath of water. And when you shake it up, see that the bottle caps close to the top and the PET, which is the outside of the bottle, sinks to the bottle. Why do some flow and why do some sink? Well, it actually has a different specific gravity. And the uh, polypropylene floats to the top and the PET sinks to the bottom. Okay. What is this doing? That's one of our flake washers. Oh, okay. It's actually... What we did earlier was we washed the outside of the bottle really well. Yeah. We hadn't touched the inside of the bottle. 
So we're actually watching the plates right there. Okay. One of the last pieces of equipment that we go through is an aluminum source. What this does is it takes any aluminum cans that might have made it all the way through our process and ground up into little flakes. This will sort out the aluminum. And then what do you do with the aluminum? We sell it to an aluminum recycler. Oh, okay. This is the last step in our process. And what we do here is we uh, check for quality results. What she's doing is she's sorting through the plastic flakes and picking out contaminants. As you see there, she's picking out colored contaminants. And we'll weigh that up and get a count of how many contaminants per batch. Okay. And why do you do this? We the have whole to, separating? Well, we have to see how the type of quality the flake is. Okay. And so if it's, uh, uh, we call Q1, if it's good quality, we'll send it to one of our silos uh, outside mm -hmm. and we use it in certain processes. If it's a lower quality, we might bag it out and rework it in our system. Okay. This is what we're after right here. It's, it's very clean and it's clear flake. Do you use clear for more things than the green normally? Yes, clear is what we use uh, the majority of okay. in our facility. What would the green bottles be used for? We send it to some other recyclers that um, make green strapping, for instance. The strapping that you see on a load of bricks mm -hmm. uh, off the side of the highway. Oh, got it. Smells like a sauna. It's not going to end our mind because I don't work here. divert it. And when we bag it out, we get a finished product oh. like that. It's like little bees. And we'll send this to water bottle companies and they'll make new new bottles out of it. Pretty cool. <laughs> so this is one of our fiber lines where we, we take the uh, flakes that we made on the other side and we melt it in uh, extruders and we make fiber out of it. This is one of our extruders. So what we're doing is we're taking the flake, the flake's being held up in that container there, and we're feeding it into the extruder. What the extruder is, it's a big auger. It's like a big screw. And on this end, it's still, it's still in flake form. And the further we get down, we heat it up and we turn it into a molten plastic. Okay. And we push that through a screen, and then we push it through spinneret. These are the small strands that are coming out, and you see there are thousands of them. Uh -huh. And right here, it's a, it's a molten, molten uh, product, and we're blowing cold air over it, what we call a quench, and we turn it into a solid a little further down on the bottom floor. Okay. Ooh, hot. And what we're doing 
as we're pulling it down into what we call a tow, it's just one strand. But there's actually thousands of little strands in each each position. Okay. And we're pulling it into one strand and, and we'll uh, draw it at the next day. As you can see here, we're filling the fiber into this can and we move the can sideways and backwards and forwards so it gets dispersed in, inside of the can. Okay. After we fill the can, we move the can over to the next step. All, the, all it is is the fibers in the can and we're pulling it out of each can and send it into the next process. And if you walk over here, we can take a look, a little closer look. So as you can see here, we're, we're stretching the fiber, we're drawing the fiber. As you see, these wheels are spinning a lot slower than those wheels there. And all we're doing is stretching the fiber to make it a smaller, skinnier strand. Okay. So what we do here is we're taking the fiber and we're crimping it. We're jamming it together. Okay. And what you have is you're starting to add some characteristic to it. And it looks like something that you could uh, make a finished product yeah. out of, maybe make carpet. That's so cool. And as you can see, in this stage, we could pull the crimp out. Yeah. So what we do to fix that is we run it through this big oven here, and that locks the crimp in. Okay. Okay, the last step in our process is, is called a cutter wheel. And what we're doing is we're cutting it into actual individual fibers. Actually, you can feel it, it kind of feels, kind of feels like cotton. Yeah, it does. How many pounds do you think you produce of the finished product? We, on this one, we do about 3 million bottles a day. Okay. That's a lot. Customers that are also uh, worldwide. Okay. Uh, we ship some into the Middle East, some into Mexico, and some into Canada. We sell it by the pound. By the pound. Okay. And truckload quantities. About 40,000 pounds will go on a truck. That's a lot. What do you think the most surprising product is that you make from used plastic bottles? From uh, well, this fiber goes into a lot of different neat products. It goes into uh, uh, residential carpet. It goes into commercial carpet. It also goes into uh, uh, pillow stuffing and uh, furniture stuffing and even mattress uh, stuffing. Uh, so it goes into a, a, a lot of different uh, finished goods. Is uh, there anything in particular that is kind of weird that is used from it? Probably from our pellets that you saw earlier. Mm -hmm. That can be made into uh, anything from a bottle all the way to uh, a thermoform or a clamshell that you would get at a, a takeout restaurant and they put it in a clear uh, plastic uh, case yeah. that's made from uh, PET. Oh, interesting. Some people don't believe in recycling because they think it's a waste of energy. Actually, it takes a lot less energy to make a product out of recycled raw materials than it does to make a product out of virgin raw materials. Okay. I think people don't realize how important recycling is, but right now I can tell that it's very important because if you don't recycle, these bottles are just going to waste and you can just recycle and put your bottles to good use towards other useful products because, I mean, without bottles, or without this, we wouldn't have some of the main things we have in our life like cushions or mattresses, you said, you make um, a lot of different products. I love reused bottles. <laughs>